In 1971, President Nixon took the United States off the gold standard, meaning the dollar could no longer be converted to gold. Since then, the world has operated under a system of money called fiat currency. The dollar, pound, euro, and every currency in the world are all fiat. Fiat currency is paper currency that a government has declared to be legal tender but can't be redeemed for gold or silver. Fiat money is essentially nothing more than a piece of paper worth something only because the government says it is. Its only value comes from the good faith by the people that use it, to accept it as payment. The problem with a fiat system is that the government is free to print as much money as they want without the burden of finding gold to support the amount they're creating. Thus, they can create billions out of thin air and pump it into circulation, making the money already out there worth less and less. But history has taught us that no fiat currency lasts forever. In fact, every currency since China first experimented with it in the 11th century has failed. So if no fiat currency has stood the test of time, why would it be different here in the United States? According to a study of 775 fiat currencies by DollarDays.org, the average life expectancy for a fiat currency is 27 years. 599 of these are no longer in circulation. Some have only taken a month to crash. Others have taken centuries. Here's how those currencies died. 20% of these failed through hyperinflation a phenomenon where printing too much money leads to prices rising by 50% or more each month. 21% were destroyed by war, in which currency was deemed no longer valid through military occupation or liberation. 12% of these were destroyed by independence, in which former colonial entities renamed or reformed their currency. 24% of these were reformed through monetary unions such as the euro in 1999 or the creation of the US dollar in 1792. Finally, 23% of these are still alive, but they're all running quickly down the path to death. The two longest running currencies are British Pound and the US Dollar. But since its creation, the British Pound has lost 99.5% of its value. As for the US Dollar, from 1971 to 2008, the amount of dollars in circulation increased by 17 times. This has resulted in an 81% fall in purchasing power. Ever wonder why all those goods and services cost more now than they did when you were younger? Now you know. The U.S. has all the characteristics of other currencies that have collapsed in history. Right now we are at war. And financing this expensive war results in monetary inflation. Currently, the United States owes more than $15 trillion in debt. And historically speaking, when a country has gotten itself into huge debt, its answer has always been to make more money. Perhaps the U.S. monetary system is headed toward complete failure like currencies before it. If so, what comes next?